and welcome to Book Nook. I'm Lynn Kessler with Read Aloud West Virginia. Joining me today is Denise Arthur, a former teacher and currently one of the Title I specialists for Kanawha County Schools. Hi Denise, how are you today? Fine, how are you today, Lynn? I am well, thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks for coming. So tell us a little bit about what drew you to the education field. Um, I've always wanted to be a teacher from a little girl. Uh, as a child, I loved to read. I didn't have very many books growing up, but I would get paperback books through Arrow Books. I would borrow books from the library, and I just generally loved to read. Okay. What were um, some of your favorites as a child? Um, I liked the Nancy Drew stories because of the mysteries. I read a lot of adventures biographies about famous Americans just kind of drew me in. And then um, we always had a mag magazines and newspapers in our house, so I had opportunities to read nonfiction as well as the fiction that I liked. That's so important, just to have any kind of print in the home right. really makes a difference. Right. So are there specific childhood memories that you have of reading with your parents, or what, what initially drew you to enjoy reading so much? Uh, I live in the country, so we didn't have a lot of options, and um, just books took me places that I couldn't go, being you know isolated kind of in the country. And um, probably one of the re things I remember about reading is um, at the school when we would borrow books on Friday, the librarian would only allow me to have one, and I would tell her I would have that finished before I went to bed that night, so I needed another <laughs> one to make it to next Friday. And that was something that stuck out in my mind is as a teacher, I would never let a child just have one if yeah. they wanted yeah. more than one. As many books as they right. will read. Right. <laughs> That's wonderful. So um, how do you feel reading and read aloud should play in the, in the curriculum now in schools? As, as a classroom teacher, and I taught sixth grade when I first started teaching, I read aloud to my sixth graders, and a lot of times as the children get up into the grades, teachers maybe don't take the time to read as much because they don't find the value in it. But that would be the time of the day that my students just loved. And there was a book that I always read every year that I could bring the kids to tears because it was emotional, and it was the story called The House Without a Christmas Tree. And of course that was many years ago when it was also on television, but that was sort of a story that just I never skipped every year. And then when I moved to working with uh, younger children, I read to them as well. And it's important, it teaches them vocabulary words, it builds their attention span, it builds their love of reading, it makes them want to learn to read if they don't already read. And as a parent, I always read to my children from the time they were an infant until even after they were independent readers, I would read to them. Then they kind of decided they just didn't want to be read to anymore. I would have kept going, but <laughs> yeah, they they were ready to not be read to anymore. Yeah, I know the the specialists encourage you to keep going right. as long as they'll right. Listen. Please, yes, so. read as long as they'll listen. Yeah. Well, today you are going to read to a, a small group of kids for us. Um, what story? Are you, what book are you going to read first? Well, I chose two books because, first of all, they're humorous, and children love humor, and we can get them drawn in. And the two books I chose. Um, lend themselves to participation by the children. And another reason I cho chose them is because of the foundational skill that it provides for reading, and that is called phonemic awareness. And phonemic awareness is simply whenever we teach children how to recognize and manipul manipulate auditorily the sounds of our language. And one of the skills in the phonemic awareness umbrella is rhyming, and that's something that parents can do through reading poems, reading nursery rhymes, and reading, there are many books, fiction stories, such as the two I'm going to read, that have a lot of rhyme in it. And hopefully, as the children get through the story, they will be able to participate and do some rhyming with me, oh. which, as a reading person, the phonemic awareness helps build phonics, and the ability to use phonics helps them to decode, and if they can decode, then that helps to break the code to reading. Oh, okay. And so, they love that rhythm, too. Yes, they love the rhythm, <laughs> and there's humor, and they can have some fun with it Good. as well. Okay, well, let's get ready and bring the kids in. That would be great. Thank okay. you. Good afternoon, boys and girls. I have a story today called The Hungry Thing. Look at him. He's pretty big, isn't he? 
I promise you he's friendly, all right? The story is written by Jan Slepian and Ann Seedler, and our pictures are by Richard E. Martin. Look where the hungry thing is going. Why do you think he's going in there? To eat. Well, let's see what happens. One morning, a hungry thing came to town. He sat on his tail. He pointed to a sign around his neck that said, Feed me. The townspeople gathered around to see the hungry thing. What would you like to eat? asked the townspeople. Shaman cakes, answered the hungry thing. Shaman cakes, cried the townspeople. How do you eat them? What can they be? Why, dear me, said a wise man, shaman cakes that's plain are a small kind of chicken that falls with the rain. Of course, said the cook, shaman cakes I've read are better to eat when you stand on your head. I think, said a little boy, you're all very silly. Shaman cakes sound like fan cakes sound like pancakes to me. So the townspeople gave the hungry thing some. And the hungry thing ate them all up. Can you eat them all up? Then the hungry thing pointed to his sign that said, what's the sign say? Yes, feed me. What would you like to eat, asked the townspeople. Tickles, answered the hungry thing. Tickles, cried the townspeople. How do you eat them? What can they be? Why, dear me, said the wise men, tickles, you know, are curly-tailed hot dogs that grow in a row. Of course, said the cook, tickles taste yummy, and you giggle and laugh with ten in your tummy. I think, said the little boy, it's all very clear. Tickles sound like sickles, sound like pickles. Pickles, excellent. Pickles to me. And they gave the hungry thing. And the hungry thing ate them all up. He's underfed. Have some bread, said a lady dressed in red. It seems to me he'd like some tea, said a fella up in a tree. A bit of rice might be nice, said a baby sucking some ice. The hungry thing just shook his head and pointed to his sign that said, Feed me. The townspeople tried again. What would you like to eat? asked the townspeople. Feet loaf, answered the hungry thing. Feet loaf, cried the townspeople. How do you eat it? What can it be? Why, dear me, said the wise man. Feet loaf, let's see. It's kind of shoe pudding that grows in a tree. Of course, said the cook. Feet loaf tastes sweet, and it's eaten by kings when they dine in bare feet. I think, said the little boy, you all ought to know. Feet loaf sounds like beet loaf sounds like meat loaf. That's right, meat loaf to me. So the townspeople gave the hungry thing some, and the hungry thing ate it all up. He again pointed to a sign that said, Feed me. What would you like to eat this time? Asked the townspeople. Hookies, answered Hookies. the hungry thing. Hookies, cried the townspeople. How do you eat them? What can they be? Hookies, said the wise men, 
are known in far lands as a special spaghetti to eat holding hands. Hookies, said the cook, are a party dish to serve to a guest if he isn't a fish. I think, said the little boy, that it's all very simple. Hookies sound like lookies sound like cookies. Cookies to me. Very good, guys. The townspeople gave the hungry thing some, and he ate them all up. Then he got to his feet, he smiled, he patted his mouth on a line of laundry, and he turned around three times. There he is. Wonder why he's going to turn around. You think he's finished? We'll find out. Is it true he's all through? Asked the lady dressed in blue. Let's all try to say goodbye, said a man with a can. Come again, said some men. But the hungry thing sat down again. <gasps> he's still hungry, isn't he? And he pointed to his sign that said, What do you want to eat? asked the townspeople. Golly pops, said the hungry thing. Golly pops, cried the townspeople. How do you eat them? What can they be? Oh dear me, said the wise men, golly pops are new. They are cereals shaped like toys and sugar coated too. Children, said the cook, buy them by the dozens and trade off the box tops with classmates and cousins. I think, said the little boy, you all ought to hear. Are you ready? Golly pops sound like dolly pops sound, sound like, like lollipops to me. So the townspeople gave the hungry thing some and the hungry thing ate them all up. And he pointed to his sign again. Oh, please, said the people. We've been here all day. Isn't there a quicker way? I think, said the boy, that there is. Have some noodles? The little boy asked the hungry thing. The hungry thing shook his head. Of course, I meant to say foodles. The hungry thing smiled and ate them all up. Are those foodles? Noodles. That's right. Just look, said the cook. Let's all try, was the cry. So they all got busy. Have some schmello. No so well. they gave him some jello. No. Have some thread. So they gave him some bread. Have a banana, and they gave him a banana. The hungry thing ate and ate, and he looked very full. Is there anything more we can give you, the townspeople wanted to know? The hungry thing covered a polite Peaceful. He thought for a while, then he said, boop with a schmacker. Boop with a smacker? Boop with a smacker? What is that? The townspeople said. The boy whispered to the townsmen, to the wise men. The wise men whispered to the cook. And the cook gave the hungry thing soup with the cracker. The hungry thing ate them all up. And he smiled. He got to his feet. He wiped his mouth off. Just as he left, he turned his sign around. What do you think is going to be on the sign? Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that what you say when someone gives you lots of good things to eat? What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Very good. You guys did really great with the rhymes. You think you can rhyme some more for me? Okay. Well, I've got another story about the hungry thing. And he's going to bring a friend today. He comes back. Hungry. There he is. And Hungry it's called thing. The Hungry Thing Returns. 
hungry. Yeah. Right. And he's got a little friend up there. Can you see the friend on the top of his head? And his friend has a sign too. Will you help me read the signs in this story? Okay. The hungry thing returns. Look where they're going. What's this look like? Slide. Yeah, sort of like a playground. You like playgrounds? Yes. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs up if you like playgrounds. I like playgrounds too. The slide is one of my favorites. One day the hungry thing came into the schoolyard. He carried a small hungry thing on his back and there is the hungry thing that's so small and hard to see. Out of the school came the headmaster, the teachers, and all the children. They gathered around the hungry thing. There's his sign. Can you remember what his sign says? Feed me. Feed me. Do you know what a headmaster is? No. It's like a principal. Do you know what a principal is? Yes. Okay. Sort of like the boss of the school? Mm. Right. Okay. That's a headmaster. And he's going to be in our story. Okay. The hungry thing pointed to the sign around his neck that said, Feed me. And the small hungry thing pointed to her sign and it said, Me. Me too. Can you say that? Me too. Right. So the small thing sign doesn't say, Feed me, right? It says, Me, me too. too. Are you going to help me say that too? Great. What would you like to eat? asked the headmaster. Flamburgers, said the hungry thing. Flamburgers, cried the school cook. Dear me, let me see. How do you eat them? What can they be? Allow me, said a teacher. Flamburgers, I think, are piles of spaghettis you eat in the sink. Not so, said the headmaster. Flamburgers, I know, are chocolate chip pickles that grow in the snow. Would you eat a chocolate chip pickle? No. Nah, me neither. A child raised his hand. I think, said the boy, flamburgers sound like hamburgers sound, sound like, like hamburgers. hamburgers. Very good, of course, said the headmaster. And he told the cook to cook them all up. And the hungry thing and the small thing ate them all up. The hungry thing pointed to his sign that said, Feed me. And the small thing pointed to her sign that said, Me too. Great, guys. What would you like to eat? asked the headmaster. Belly jeans, cried the hungry thing. Belly jeans, cried the cook. Dear me, let me see. How do you eat them and what can they be? But of course, said a teacher, belly jeans I've read are square little pancakes that you wear on your head. Belly jeans are rare, said the headmaster. They are handled with care when eaten by dragons in long underwear. A child raised her hand. I know, said the girl. Belly jeans sound like Kelly jeans sound like belly jeans. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. Of course, said the headmaster, and he told the cook to bring some. The hungry thing and the small thing ate them all up. Let's eat them all up. The hungry thing rubbed his stomach. He pointed to his sign that said, Feed me. And the small thing pointed to her sign that said, me too. And the teachers began to worry. I don't believe they'll ever leave. It's just not right, such an appetite. I fear the worst. What if they burst? Remember our manners, said the headmaster. What would you like to eat, asked the visitors. Blow nuts, <laughs> cried the hungry thing. Blow nuts, cried the cook. Dear me, let me see. How do you eat them and what can they be? I've heard, said a teacher, that blow nuts taste great. 
They are round, furry fishes that roll on your plate. That's right, said the headmaster. Blow nuts can float. With a wink and a smile, they'll jump into your boat. Many hands went up. A boy with glasses said, it's easy. Blow nuts sound like show nuts sound like donuts to me. And the cook gave them some. And the hungry thing and the little thing ate them all up. The small thing began to squirm. She couldn't sit still. She whispered in her father's ear, Math boom, the hungry thing told the headmaster. Math boom, cried the cook. How do you eat that? What can it be? The headmaster didn't know. The teachers didn't know. One girl went up to the hungry thing and said, Math boom. Sounds like one thing to me. Does your little girl need the bathroom? The hungry thing nodded and he lowered his head and the small thing slid off and the little girl took him to the bathroom. When they returned, oh look this, what's this? Yes, when they returned, the small thing would not climb on her father's back. She went down the slide instead. The hungry thing stopped her. He placed her on his back once more. He pointed to his sign that said, Feed me. But the small thing hid her face. Can you see the tears on her eyes? I wonder why she's crying. Do you think she's hungry? Or do you think she wants something else? We'll have to find out. What would you like to eat? Asked the headmaster. Crackeroni and sneeze, the hungry thing answered. Crackeroni and sneeze, said the cook. Let me see. How do you eat that? What can it be? A teacher said, Crackaroni and sneeze is a slippery dough. When you catch it and eat it, it makes your nose grow. It tastes like roast, said the headmaster. I prefer it on toast, especially good when you dine with a ghost. All hands were raised. A boy with freckles said, Crackaroni and sneeze sounds like snackaroni and bees sounds like mm, macaroni and cheese. cheese to me. Why, of course, said the headmaster. And the cook brought some. The hungry thing ate it all. And he wiped his mouth on the headmaster's sleeve. He was ready to go. But where was the small thing? What do you, you slide? Yes, look at her over there. She was playing on the slide again. This time, when the hungry thing lifted her off, she began to cry, and she would not stop. The hungry thing tried to comfort her. Oh, no, they were about to go. I do confess, we're in a mess, said the headmaster. The children tried to help. What does she like best, they asked the hungry thing. Harsh fellows, he replied, and they brought her marshmallows. She didn't stop crying. My stream, said the hungry thing. They gave her some ice, ice cream. cream. She didn't stop crying. Gobble bum, Gum. said the hungry thing. Bubble gum. They offered her bubble, bubble gum. gum. Nothing made her stop crying. What do you think she wants? What did she really, really like in the playground? Slide. The slide, let's see. The hungry thing put his head on his claws. 
He did not know what to do. The school children whispered to one another. Then one child whispered to the headmaster. He said, what a splendid idea, and set everyone to work. Look what the children are doing. What did they do? Take the slide. What do you think they're going to do with the slide? Put it on the back. Put it on the back? You think the hungry thing could carry that on his back? Let's see. Carefully, they lifted the slide. Very good, Grady. And hung it around the neck of the hungry thing. And the small thing hugged it for you to take home. Do you think she's going to quit crying? Let's see if she's crying. The hungry thing smiled. He turned his sign around. And big letters it said, what do you say when you, somebody gives you something? Thank you. Thank you. It's real small there, isn't it? The small thing was worn out. She was fast asleep with her head on the slide. The hungry thing turned her sign, uh, sign around and it said, say it with me, me too. too. You can find this book and other books like it at the Kanawha County Library. Thank you and good afternoon.